First Lady Melania Trump and the president's daughter, Ivanka, the dressed in all black and wore veils to meet Pope Francis on Wednesday, just as former First Lady Michelle Obama did when she met Pope Benedict. The women traveled to the Vatican on Wednesday with President Donald Trump, who was meeting with Francis for one of his most high-profile talks. Trump, Melania, Ivanka and her husband Jared Kushner were greeted in a Vatican courtyard by Archbishop George Ganswain, the prefect of the pontifical household. Melania and Ivanka kept with tradition and wore veils to meet Francis. The veil, or mantilla, is traditionally worn by women as a sign of respect when meeting the Pope. Trump senior aide Hope Hicks wore one as well. Neither woman, however, wore a headscarf in Saudi Arabia over the weekend, despite the local custom of Muslim women wearing hijabs in public. Melania's predecessor Michelle Obama did not cover her head when she accompanied then-President Barack Obama on a condolence visit in January 2015 after the death of King Abdullah. Donald Trump tweeted his disapproval at the time, saying, Many people are saying it was wonderful that Mrs. Obama refused to wear a scarf in Saudi Arabia, but they were insulted. We have enough, sick, enemies. Like Ivanka and Melania, Michelle Obama opted to wear a black veil while meeting Pope Benedict in 2009. Catholic women worldwide typically wore mantillas to church until the 1950s. Melania, Ivanka, and Jared sat in an anteroom while Francis and the president held their audience, speaking with gentlemen of His Holiness members and against Wayne. Trump looked uncomfortable as he entered a small elevator taking him to the third floor of the Apostolic Palace, where he was accompanied by Ganswain and other officials along a frescoed corridor to the Pope's private study. Following behind Trump were daughter Ivanka, Kushner, National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster and Advisor Hicks. Trump greeted Francis in Solid del Trinetto, the room of the Little Throne, on the second floor of Apostolic Palace Wednesday morning. Pope Francis did not smile as he greeted Trump outside the study. Trump, seeming subdued, said it is a great honor. The two men then posed for photographs before heading into their meeting, which at precisely 8.33 a.m. Following their meeting, which lasted for about half an hour, Trump smiled and chatted with Francis after the two warmly shook hands. Francis also shook hands with other members of the president's team, including former bodyguard Keith Schiller and social media director Dan Scavino. As they were leaving the meeting, the Pope joked with First Lady Melania, possibly alluding to the president's big and tall frame. What do you give him to eat, Potica? the Pope asked. Potica is a nut-filled cake from the First Lady's home country of Slovenia. Melania did not dispute it, simply laughing and responding Potica. Trump and Pope Francis then exchanged gifts at the Vatican before the president departed. Pope Francis gave the president copies of his three main teaching documents as parting gifts, as he typically does for visiting heads of state. The red leather-bound booklets to some degree define his papacy and priorities. Some of the main themes contained in them contrast sharply with President Donald Trump's policies and campaign promises, particularly concerning approaches to the environment and income inequality. Trump's gift for Francis was wrapped in a big blue box. The president said he was delivering books from Martin Luther King. I think you'll enjoy them. I hope you do. The White House said the set includes the five books King wrote in his lifetime. Each one is custom-bound and the books are in a custom display case. A piece of granite from the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in Washington is also included. The White House says the gift honors Dr. King's hope, vision, and inspiration for generations to come. Trump also gave Francis a bronze sculpture. Named Rising Above, the White House says it represents hope for a peaceful tomorrow. Trump's meeting with Pope Francis, his third stop on a nine-day foreign tour due to end on Saturday, is part of his world tour of religions after meeting leaders of Muslim nations in Saudi Arabia and visiting holy sites in Jerusalem. But while his talks in Saudi Arabia and Israel were mostly friendly, the meeting between the head of the Roman Catholic Church and the thrice-married, blunt-spoken Trump could be a little more confrontational. The meeting could provide powerful imagery to Catholic voters back in the United States as well as the possibility for conflict between a president and a pope who have not often seen eye to eye. The two men's often opposite worldviews collided head-on early last year, when Francis was sharply critical of Trump's campaign pledge to build an impenetrable wall on the Mexican border and his declaration that the United States should turn away Muslim immigrants and refugees.
A person who thinks only about building walls, wherever they may be, and not building bridges, is not Christian, Francis said then. The pontiff has been a vocal advocate for aiding refugees, particularly those fleeing the violence in Syria, deeming it both a moral imperative and Christian duty to help. Trump has never been one to let an insult, perceived or real, go by without a response, and he made no exception for the world's best-known religious leader. He called Francis disgraceful for doubting his faith. And even the pontiff's congratulatory message sent to Mark Trump's inauguration contained a sly reference to their disagreement, as the Pope wrote that he hoped the United States' international stature would continue to be measured above all by its concern for the poor, the outcast and those in need. Trump, at first, did not plan to stop in Rome during his visit to Europe, which some in the Vatican saw as a snub. When he changed his mind, the Vatican squeezed him in at 8.30 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, an unusual day and an unusually early time. Though both Trump and Francis are known for their unpredictability, papal visits with heads of state are carefully arranged bits of political and religious theater that follow a specific program, with little room for deviation or unwanted surprises. Trump is the 13th president to visit the Vatican, and, as part of his tour, he will view the Sistine Chapel. In recent days, Francis and Trump have been in agreement on a need for Muslim leaders to do more against extremists in their own communities. But there are few other areas where their views align. Francis holds his weekly audience with the general public on Wednesday at 10 a.m. in St. Peter's Square. After the meeting, Trump moves on to Brussels for a NATO summit followed by the last stop on his trip to a group of seven summit in Sicily.